Oh, you gave me this um, article about, it's called the 1876, the Texas question. Tell me about that. I think it's very well, interesting. Well, it, it, it is very interesting. And this article was hap happened to be published, I think it was like last uh, in June or something in the USPA may, uh, publication called Players Edition. And it's written by the head of the polo, uh, Steve, Stephen Rizzo. He's the head of the USPA, right? I believe so. Mr. Rizzo, yeah. But, uh, well, there's always been a debate, and I, I've given a lot of uh, introductory talks about polo, and, and everyone agrees that polo was first played in the, Uni in the United States in 1876 after this uh, publisher from New York uh, had gone over to England and seen the, the sport played, so he came back here and more or less be, he's credited with introducing it to the U.S. But there's always been a question of where the first polo match was actually played. Most people subscribe to upstate New York, but there was always a Texas connection to it, and in my talks I would say, since we're here in Texas, well, I kind of vote on the Texas side of the first match. But it, it, you got to think back, 1876, that, that was a very important year for really two events. The first one that occurred was the Custer Massacre at the Battle of the Little Bighorn in uh, um, May or June of 1876. And then, of course, 4th July of 1876 was a 100-year anniversary of the creation of the United States of America, the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Uh, so you put that in context, that's a long time ago, uh, but there, there's cred some credible evidence that there may have been a polo match played in 1876 up in uh, Denison, Texas, which is only about 50 miles northeast of here. It's a small town. Yeah, and it, it's a small town. It would have been bigger really at that time. R really, you think it was kind of more of a hub than it is now? It would have been a market town. Realize. Okay. Small towns were more important back then because there weren't any cars or trucks. If you wanted to go to town, you went by horseback, and if the horse is walking, that's about four miles an hour. So really, if you look at it, around every 10 to 12 miles, there was a town of importance, and Denison was one of those. Um, but anyway, uh, there was an article in the Galveston Morning News, which at that point in time, that's pre the 1900 Galveston hurricane, Galveston would have been the biggest city in Texas. Um, and there, that Galveston Daily News was would have been the biggest newspaper in Texas, and there was a report of a polo match being played up in Denison. Um, and exactly when, or uh, compared to the New York one, that's a little bit in question. Uh, again, reporting something that happened in Denison, Texas, uh, in a Galveston Daily News, uh, Telegraph would have been about the most advanced means they would have had to communicate that down, Telegraph or the mail. Uh, neither, uh, of course, the mail wouldn't even be very fast. So it's, it's not certain where it was played. There was no doubt that Bennett, the the editor, New York newspaper man, he apparently came to Texas, up to North Texas, and acquired some of the horses that ended up going to New York. The the cow ponies were very adaptable to playing uh, to playing polo, and really at that point in time they would have been playing under more or less the old English rules or Hurlingham rules, that the uh, maximum size horse allowed was fourteen hands two. Which is technically a pony, right? That is, by definition, uh, yeah. any any horse shorter than 14 hands to is a pony. Yeah. Uh, it was only years after that before they lifted that that restriction. So he would have been definitely looking for the, the cow pony type pony to play polo on. Plus, you know, these ponies that have been roped off of and things like that, they're used to swing things swinging around their head like the polo mallet mm -hmm. gets swung on the hips and stuff. So it had been very adaptable horse to polo. Yeah, it makes sense. I don't know, to me, after reading this, this is very, I mean, Mr. Rizzo did a lot of research on this. It's a very great article. Um, but um, 
My opinion is, I think that the hor I think that the original polo match is my opinion, just based on this. Really wasn't, even though I'm a Texan, fourth generation mm -hmm. Dallas. I think, I think the first polo match was probably in New York, but the horses came from here. They well could have. I think. One thing that article will convince you is the issue may still be in doubt. Yeah, I think it is. It is, and I think you're right. It has to do with, I mean, how amazing that even the Galveston paper would pick up a story in Denison yeah. back yeah. then. Anyway, well, thank you for that. I, I know that you do a great introduction to polo, and we're going to do another interview with you um, talking about that because you're famous at Willow Bend and Las Cleans Polo Club of giving the um, intro to polo or friends of polo, which... In about 30 minutes, you get, you get dressed up in, in all polo gear, and you explain to the the novice or experienced ones, but, but it helps the people before they watch the polo match to know the history of the sport, the functions of the player, and the rules of the game, so that at least they, while they're watching it at the event, they've got a little idea of what's about to happen. And um, so we're going to do that when we... Um, are in front of I want to do that live in front of an actual polo match so we'll as, do that as, later. As you know I always enjoy talking about polo and and when I give that presentation I I try not to talk to the people I try to talk with the people about it and I'm always open to questions as I go along but I think it the one thing I can hopefully do for polo is is get it other people is interested in it is I became and more or less I my interest started from hearing a talk about polo before the polo season started in 1982. Yeah, yeah. and um, and I like to tell people Fred is a walking talking encyclopedia of polo I mean you know you really there I mean, you know some and it's I think it's your engineering mind you know because you and you love it and everybody loves Fred. I mean, they do. Yeah. It, I know I'm making well, you blush. You're, but yeah, you're making me blush. But <laughs> I'm always reminded of old John Wayne saying. It said, talk low and talk slow, but don't talk too much. When I get on polo, I tend to violate that third rule. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah, I, you know, I do too. I don't know why I get so excited about it, but I do. Anyway, it's a cool sport. Anyway, but thank you for um, talking to me about this, and um, so we could share Talk it with the with board. you with me. Yes, with me, and and it's neat to know. So so again, this this was downstairs was the clubhouse. Yes, or, yes. The, up here was the bar. You'd come in the south end. There you were in the bar there. Okay. And then this back was the main dining room, and the small portion here on the rear was the actual kitchen. This was all banquet rooms upstairs, and they could really have literally three different functions going on at once, and once in a while they did. Or the whole club might be devoted to, to one function, uh, except they they really kind of had one, one thing, and that was they never closed the bar to the members, and you, of course you could eat in the bar too. No matter how big the function was, if a member wanted to stop in the bar, realize there wasn't a lot of places around in Plano to yeah. get a drink. <laughs> and so the the last checker you said again was on the 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 grandstand side, behind the grandstand. Behind the grandstand, okay. yeah. Well, I was yeah. I was only like nine or ten, so I never saw that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, great. Well, thanks for telling telling Enjoy us about it. it.